We're here at SlaterCon Zurich with Samuel Leubli, PhD candidate in interactive machine translation at the University of Zurich. Samuel, we've seen a lot of interest in uh, machine translation over the last two years. It's really risen with 30 research papers published on the main research portals just in November alone. Uh, do you think interest has reached a peaking point or are we going to see a lot more activity here going forward? Mm. Well, I think in machine translation, uh, that's been a field where people have been interested in like for quite some time. So it's traditionally there's been a lot of interest in machine translation. And of course, with um, well neural networks and the advent of these technologies, there has been a boost in a sense. So also like new, peoples, uh, new people have entered the field. Um, but I think the transition, at least in research, is, is basically finished by now. People have really switched over. And so maybe not many more new people will join in, but I think Paper-wise, you'll still see a lot. I think it's um, still, well, there's a lot of things to do. Okay, and you've touched on the fact that uh, machine, neural machine translation research is now being applied in the commercial sense. So uh, you've seen a lot of reports recently about the rise in neural machine translation quality. So where do you rate it at right now? And do you think there's further room for improvement in the near future? Mm, that's a good question um, because uh, I think people have really noticed um, a boost in quality. I mean, it's really it's it's conceivable, right? When you look at the output of a statistical machine translation system and a neural system, uh, people realize that the output is really a lot more fluent. The thing is that um, adequacy-wise, so in terms of the content, what's in a translation, the systems haven't actually improved so much, and I think there's really like a lot of improvement there still possible, and I think. A lot of groups are actually approaching that, so like experts such as Rico Sendrich in Edinburgh or also uh, Kenyon Joe in New York, their groups, they're really looking into this, they have interesting work in their pipeline, um, things like considering document level context and, and stuff like that. So really I think uh, going forward, well there will be improvements in quality still. I think it's not comparable to um, what we had with statistical machine translation where at some point we've reached a certain plateau, maybe that's going to come, but I don't think we're there yet. Okay. So we haven't reached the plateau, but you did touch on the fact that it's being adopted more widely. So do you think there will be uh, a growing job market for both researchers in neuromachine translation and also those trying to implement it commercially? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the job market has changed completely in my opinion. If you look at what it was like 10 years ago when people hardly knew about uh, machine translation, at least decision makers in the industry. Um, so I think, yeah, there's great opportunities um, for MT experts these days also because, um, well, people realize that with the knowledge um, that machine translation experts have, um, they can also easily work on other machine learning applications. If you want to work on image recognition or something, the skills are actually quite transferable. So I'd say, um, yeah, there's lots of opportunities out there. Excellent. Well, thank you very much.